for Iowa and Colorado. Away we go. And Colorado wins the tip. Here we see Iowa starting out in man-to-man, -man, but it's a team that will change up their defenses. And right away, Vonley gets fouled by Martin. So Kate Martin picks up an early personal. And if you were surveying and coming up with your greatest concerns if you were Iowa, it would be how you handle the size of Vonley inside. And Iowa had some foul trouble when they met Colorado a year ago. Part of it was trying to defend Von Ley inside. See the coaches for today's action. J.R. Payne seeking Colorado's fourth trip to the Elite Eight. Lisa Bluter seeking Iowa's sixth. Von Ley misses the second, and Martin left alone for the rebound. See immediately, Jalen Sherrod has the defensive assignment like she did a year ago on Caitlin Clark. Clark bodies right through Sherrod in an early bucket for Caitlin Clark. One thing that was interesting talking to Colorado and what they might do differently is Vonley maybe could have had another foul call there. No whistle on Stolke. Oh, nice delivery. Clark to Martin. Marshall connects. Lisa Bluter told us how important it is for Marshall to see one go through early. She does there as Sherrod lays it in. Just to finish that thought, Colorado was very steadfast on, we're not going to do anything differently defensively for Caitlin Clark. We're going to play Colorado defense. Which is most of the time just straight up man-to-man -man with help side from your teammates. Here is a falter, lost it, but a foul. And the whistle will go against Miller, her first. Caitlin Clark, six feet tall. Jalen Sherrod, 5'7". So Caitlin goes right to the basket, uses her size to get an easy look early. And then just the pass from Martin to Gabby Marshall. Beautifully done. Here's Martin, deep underneath. Martin lays it in. It's a huge start for Iowa to be able to get some buckets inside. They struggled so much from three in the second round. Well, they struggled from everywhere. Had their fewest field goals made in a game since 2012, and yet they were able to win that game and advance here. Clark, a three, short. And rebound Colorado. Here comes Sherrod. Sherrod cups it, dishes it. Miller unable to hit from three, and Clark secures the rebound. Iowa had just 17 made field goals in that second round win. They already have three today. Clark left alone, lays it in. And Von Ley would drop coverage on the on-ball screen. Ooh, Nolan gets out ahead and finishes on the gorgeous down-court feed. One of Colorado's big, big concerns coming into this game was transition defense and getting out to the shooters. But how about that outrunning Iowa the other way? Here is Clark again, giving that right side to drive. Dumps it to Stolke, who's fouled by Vonley on the floor. And the first foul on Aaronette Vonley. You just see here, the Vonley is just playing in the paint, waiting to see what, the, what she can do defensively. And Sherrod's going to really have to fight over the screen if she doesn't have any help from her big. Here's Clark into Marshall. Thought about taking another. Clark will short. Conley the rebound. Colorado playing with pace here. Both teams up and down. Sherrod will take short on a three. You saw Caitlin Clark's hands down a little bit defensively. Iowa wants Sherrod taking that shot. She's just 24% on the season from three. Clark drops it. Stokey finishes. Nice delivery from Caitlin Clark. And that was something else Lisa Bluter talked about. Stokey getting an early bucket being important for her. Vonley bodies in and finishes. And Stokey taking a moment to get to her feet. An 11-7 lead for Iowa in the early going. Just already a completely different offensive rhythm than what you saw against West Virginia. 
Stolke as it poked out of bounds. Last hit per Colorado basketball. An elite passer. Caitlin Clark leads the nation in assists, just looking one way, draws Von Lay and just drops it to Stolke, man. Post players, <laughs> you dream of playing with a guard like that. Just get your easy looks. One of five players since the 1999-2000 season with at least 300 assists in a season. She has done it in back-to-back -back years. Here's Sherrod, all Pac-12 this season. Miller will back it up. Miller given a lot of space, unable to hit from three, and Martin flags down the rebound, off and running for Iowa. Martin looking to take it all the way, and Sherrod knocks it off. Martin out of bounds, Colorado ball, and Kate Martin mystified as to how that wasn't off of Colorado. Jalen Schrod, just incredible speed. She's at one end of the floor and just puts the afterburners on. It's where she's so good, pokes the ball from behind. Was that off her leg? I did. On that angle, it didn't appear so. The Colorado ball. There's Sherrod on the attack. Addison O'Grady there for the initial stop. They swing it here. Little mid-range jumper won't go for Sadler, just into the game off the bench. Mia Sadler, here's Clark. Nice look, and the layup is good for a falter. And Colorado turns it over on the other end. And Astolke getting a little attention after she took that shot. Pass. I mean, just incredible, splitting the defense, and she knows how to get it where you're going, never go passing the ball where you were. The range is what draws you in and has drawn in the nation because we've never seen it before in the women's game. But her passing is also just exquisite. And that's a travel on Kate Martin as Sherrod again. A, a huge factor defensively. That's three early turnovers from Iowa. Sharon, a premier defender, and talked about how she knows, even though she is an introvert, she has learned this season that her team feeds off her energy. So she needs to sometimes bring a little more than she otherwise would. Here's Frida Foreman. A big time threat from three. Whitaker dancing through the lane, couldn't finish. Here comes Clark. Flings it ahead to a falter, lays it in, plus the foul. Caitlin to this and one opportunity for a falter. I mentioned it earlier, Rebecca, but worth mentioning again, when we were talking with Caitlin yesterday about the pressure both she gabby marshall and kate martin talked about feeling it big time in those games in iowa city not wanting to lose in their home floor and they hoped they just might play more freely here in albany which they felt they did last year once they got to seattle for the regionals caitlin mentioned it's the most fun time of year to play basketball she looks like she's having fun so far in this one here is clark clark stops looking for some help finds it in marshall Here's Clark around two screens. Clark not finding much space. Dumps it underneath the Stol Stolke gets blocked and 4.6 on the shot clock for Iowa. Aaronette Vonley back in for Colorado as Kylie Fierbach comes into the game for Iowa. Stolke wasn't quite ready for it. A falter with three to shoot. Might have to. Gets it to Stolke. They didn't have time for that. Shot clock violation as Iowa needed a falter to just take that shot. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. 
For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Yeah, yes, that we've been able to have all games on for the last four years. It's so fun. <laughs> so fun. Such an exciting time. Well, you and I are excited to go watch the rest of the games on That's ESPN right. after this. You have USC Baylor and then Duke UConn. Four men couldn't finish on the interior. Weta keeps it alive for Colorado. Here's Vonley. Smith guarded nicely there by a falter. Adler gets stood up by Stolke and fouled. And that will be the first personal on Hannah Stolke. Iowa has other big bodies, but no other post player who plays like Stolke, who runs the floor like she does, gets easy buckets in transition, can take you off the drive. It's important for her to stay out of foul trouble. David Clark telling us she feels Stolke is the best transition big in the country. Vonley gets inside of Stolke and finishes. Vonley is unstoppable when she gets positioned like that around the rim. Here's Clark with Iowa swiftly up the floor. Clark being hawked by Weta. Clark able to finish. She's done a nice job navigating when to look for threes and when to dribble penetrate. That three won't go. Rebound a Folter. Up ahead to Clark. Clark with space. Look out. Back iron, no, and it tilts out of bounds to Colorado. Caitlin Clark has done a nice job probing and getting into the paint here, just curling around Weta, getting inside and finishing. And you don't mind her taking that logo bomb after you've just scored a basket and gotten a stop on the other end. Six points, three rebounds, four assists in this opening quarter for Clark, who has scored or assisted on 14 of Iowa's 17. Iowa in his zone, 2-3 right now. Here's Sherrod back in, being guarded by Marshall. Kendall Weta into the corner, that three for Smith. Off the mark, Clark on the rejection, and the next one is a foul. Clark did not put a body on initially that allowed the offensive rebound, and then the second swipe caught a wrist. Yeah, certainly when you're in a zone, you need to box out, and just a great job at Weta coming in, getting it. Oh. I thought it was two clean blocks. Yeah. Maddie Nolan will shoot free throws and misses the first. Yeah, so it's Nolan with the outstanding offensive board. And Nolan hits the second. Caitlin Clark brought up unprompted to us how significant of an addition she thought Maddie Nolan was for this Colorado team. A transfer from Michigan who has tournament experience. Here's Clark around the Stolke screen. Marshall attacks, can't finish. Stolke has it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here as it last hit Colorado. Fascinated sometimes when Caitlin Clark comes off a screen and she points because she knows where her teammate should go, even if her teammate hasn't already gone there. Clark to inbound here. Gets it into Stolke, gets it right back. Clark forcing her way, kicks it out. That three, no good for Fierbach. And the rebound secured by Sarah Rose Smith for Colorado. Sherrod just drops it out of bounds, and Colorado gives it back. J.R. Payne done such a wonderful job with this Colorado program, now in her eighth year as head coach. They've won 20-plus games in three straight seasons, trying to go to the Elite Eight as a program for the first time since 2002. Whitaker in now for Von Ley with a fast-paced game. Jared Payne doing a good job making sure her bigs are fresh. Colorado in back-to-back -back Sweet 16s for the first time since 2003. Here's Clark around the screen from Stolke. Bounces to her. Stolke can't finish through the contest from Whitaker. Here's Sherrod all the way in. Lays it home. Clark had to be careful already with one foul. And a nice response here from Colorado after Iowa came out of the gates hot in this game. 
Clark to the corner. Marshall's three won't go. Rebound, Smith. Sherrod flips it up and off. Rebound of Folter for Iowa. Clark looking to take it. Off the dribble to the corner. Martin connects. Fifth assist of the quarter for Clark. Martin drills the three. She shot it at 38% this season, 41 last season. Not a 14 second difference game in shot clock. Smith will pull up. Can't get it to go, and a foul here against Colorado. Caitlin Clark's dribble penetration brings her inside. She could easily take a shot here. She realizes she's drawn the defense, sends it to the grad student, Kate Martin, to hit the open look from the corner. This is an Iowa team that did not make, outside of Caitlin's Clark's, made threes in the second round. Not a single player made a three. And in this first quarter, Marshall, as well as Martin, have each hit a three. Shot clock turned off. Six-point Iowa lead. Clark bounces, needs help, finds Stolke. What a pass! And Stolke lays it in. A delectable dime from Caitlin Clark to finish the first. Stolke and Marshall start the quarter for Iowa. Iowa still awaiting the return of Molly Davis, who had been a key ingredient all season, but a falter has slid into the starting lineup nicely. Here's Clark. Give you the Colorado lineup in a moment. Here's Martin cutting, extra feed. Stolke misses the layup. Battles back for it. Martin cleans it up. It's interesting. That time, I don't know if Colorado was playing a sagging man on the other four players. It also looked like it could potentially be a box and one on Caitlin Clark. Nolan, Sadler, Vonley, Sherrod on the floor for Colorado along with Sarah Rose Smith as Stokey collects the rebound. Here is Clark. Clark around the Stokey screen. Being hawked by Sherrod. Sherrod falls. Clark dishes. Stokey finishes. Puts the foul. And a chance for three for Hannah Stokey. Caitlin Clark's ability to manipulate the defense and then to read a step ahead so that she can deliver to her teammates is simply next level. Here, gets by, looks, turns. All right, I'm going to draw one and then just drop the dime to Hannah Stokey. Spoon feeding. Seven assists already for Clark. Vonley picks up her second foul. Oh, that's huge. Vonley is the advantage offensively for Colorado in this matchup. Her size and strength inside. And she has grown so much this season. Her confidence continuing to blossom. Still just a junior. The transfer from Arizona heads to the bench. Iowa on a 10-0 run extending back to the end of the first quarter. Here's Foreman. Can't get it to drop. Rebound, ends up in the lap of Nolan. Four minute three, won't go. Sherrod goes soaring in, what an offensive rebound. Foreman attacks the closeout. Jumper won't go either, great box out there from Kate Martin to secure it for the Hawkeyes. Here's Clark, a deep three, no. It's about the only thing Clark hasn't done thus far as Whitaker travels and Colorado turns it over. Clark now 0 for 4 from 3. She's 3 for 3 from 2 and has 7 assists. Clark enters this game just 3 made 3's away from tying Diana Taurasi's all-time NCAA tournament record for most 3's. That's in a career. Oh, 
Clark. Tried to get it into Martin, knocked out of bounds by Nolan. I thought that might have gone off of Martin's hands. And Falter over to Martin. Nice hands by Weta coming up with a steal. Weta all the way in. It gets denied by Martin, but the follow is good. McLeod getting minutes here with the foul trouble from Vonley. Colorado doing a really nice job getting on the offensive glass. It's an area they dominated when they met Iowa a season ago. They had 21 offensive rebounds in that Sweet 16 matchup. A number that Lisa Bluter kept bringing up to her team as they prepared for this game. Clark, she got it. First three of the day for Caitlin Clark. Defenses try to dictate where she goes, Caitlin Clark goes where she wants to go. <laughs> and the crowd responds. I went a triangle in two right now. Wet us three. Rims in. Colorado finally gets one to drop. They have been 0 for 7 from three. Here's Clark coming back for it. Thought about it. Clark guarded by Sherrod. Wants the screen. Clark. Kicks it back to Stolke. Just knew she'd be there. And Stolke unable to hang on to it. Here's Weta. Kendall Weta gets fouled by Martin. And that's going to be number two on Kate Martin. Caitlin Clark just goes where she wants on the floor. To the right, steps out, hits the three. Holly? There's a reason Caitlin can get to any spot she wants to on the court. She knows how to use her physicality. She told me herself she's got a little bit of a frail build, but over the course of time, she has added weight. She's added about 10 pounds since she came to Iowa. A lot of strength training. But one of the things that I think helps is she grew up playing against boys until she was in sixth grade. They didn't have enough competitive leagues for little girls in West Des Moines, Iowa, where she grew up, and her dad said, we were just trying to find the highest level of competition. And Caitlin said, I played against the boys a lot longer than most people, but those boys to this day still text her and call her. They're super proud of her, but she knows how to use her frame and physicality to her advantage. We saw her family, her mother, father, two brothers in the crowd. Clark gets fouled by Sherrod. And Clark shaking out that right arm a little bit after taking the contact. She's done a really good job of trying to probe and get touches in the paint. And yeah, Sherrod gets her right on the arm. Sherrod was frustrated with that call, but that's clearly a foul. Good thing she has all that extra muscle, Holly. <laughs> Sherrod got to find out up close. There's a falter bouncing in. O'Grady kicks out the repost. O'Grady can't flip it in, gets it back, kicks it out. O'Grady turns and finishes. Nice delivery to O'Grady for two. And then a whistle underneath against Iowa. Again, that was a situation where Colorado missed the presence of Von Ley on the floor, defending Addison O'Grady. And you could tell Fierbach was just insistent upon trying to find a way to get it to her. Yeah, like, here, big girl, no, we yeah, really want yeah. you to try to score. Right, Von Ley's on the bench, this is your time. Oh, nice inbounds, and that's gonna be number two on Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark got her second foul in the Sweet 16 in the first half a year ago, and spent a fair amount of time in the second quarter on the bench as a result. And so now Lisa Bluter and Caitlin Clark talking it through. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Elite Eight continues tonight on TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. So, Rebecca, for now, Clark is going to stay on the floor. Martin went to the bench after picking up her second. Marshall will come in for McCabe, who was in just momentarily. And 
For the most part, Caitlin Clark has stayed out of foul trouble, but where you have to be careful is like a dribble penetration where she might flick the offhand, something that's minimal, but that can be called a foul. Like what we saw on that made three. Yes. Here's O'Grady, it's taken away by Sherrod. Jalen Sherrod dashing, dishing, Foreman hitting on a three. Three to Foreman had huge success from three in the first half when they met Iowa last season. At 18 points in that first half. Clark putting it in off the window. Caitlin Clark in double figures. By the way, that Foreman three set the program record for most threes in a career, men's or women's for Colorado from free to Foreman. As Sherrod then answers with a little bunny. Colorado finding a better rhythm offensively here over the last few possessions. Certainly. Oh, Gabby Marshall was wide open. Clark did not see her, but will take the layup herself. I think running down the floor, Gabby was telling her that she was open the last time. 13 points for Clark, seven assists. The reigning national player of the year who has set the basketball world on fire. There's Sherrod, kicking it out. That three is short from Weta. And the rebound to Falter. Sherrod got the favorable switch. I thought she might try to drive inside on the big. Fierbach putting it on the deck, trying to get an angle, could not. It'll stay here. Nice job defensively by Frida Foreman. Iowa 10-point lead in a big first. Ashman Ashton Shade is coming off a really solid second round performance. And then the Ivies, the grad transfers alongside Juju Watkins, have been stellar. A falter, great footwork in Sydney. A falter finishes. She has really done a great job sliding into the starting lineup for Iowa. With Molly Davis down. Attack Caitlin Clark. She's got two fouls. Just take it at her. See if you can pick up a cheap third. Whitaker, no. There you go. Look out, Caitlin, in the middle of that mess. That three. Off the mark. Maddie Nolan unable to hit. A 12-point Iowa lead. You wonder, too, Rebecca, if this gets to a certain moment with a certain lead at the end of this quarter, if Clark might end up on the bench as Clark lays it in. And she's lucky she did not get called for an offensive foul there. Using the left arm to create space, it would have been number three. Clark trying to urge on the Iowa supporters behind their bench. That jumper is good for Sadler. How about Iowa? 17 field goals already in this first half. They had 17 total in their second round win. Stolke to the corner. A falter attacks the closeout and gets the whistle. Sydney a falter. Will go to the line as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Jalen Sherrod getting ready to check back in for Colorado. She is such a difference maker for them. So disruptive. But what I want to share with you is just how smart she is. She has graduated with a bachelor's degree in sociology in three years. Got a master's degree in organizational leadership in 2023. And is now working on her second master's degree in criminal justice. She has a 3.82 GPA. And you see her intelligence everywhere she is on the court. She's thinking the game, sharing with her teammates. Uh, just one of the most remarkable young ladies we've ever seen in this game. 5'7", one of the smallest on the court, but one of the biggest impacts every time she steps on. With the demands on a student athlete's time, it is hard enough to graduate in four years. For her to get her undergrad in three and then go for multiple graduate degrees, impressive. Incredible and really enjoy getting a chance to meet with her yesterday as a falter. Hits both free throws, 14-point Iowa edge. The winner of this game will play LSU Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Clark goes to the bench with those two fouls as Foreman rings in a three, and so we'll see how Iowa handles these minutes with Clark on the bench. They've had Martin on the bench for an extended time with two fouls. Here's Stolke, muscling inside, gets it back, and gets fouled. McLeod whistled for the personal.
free to form and so capable from hitting from the perimeter here. That's tough when you are retreating and stepping back, quickly gathers and hits the long one. It was so great talking with Frida yesterday about her roots and coming from Denmark and talking about her parents staying up late for all of her games and then going to work the next day because they want to watch them live. Talking about the gym she played in in Denmark, the most fans she'd ever played in front of was 3,000, and that was a national team game. She said most of her games over there were just youth basketball teams and relatives and friends of people playing, and that was it. Those were the crowds she played in front of, and she has thrived at Colorado. Parents do what they need to do to watch their children <laughs> play. That layup is good. Again, Clark had to be careful with those two fouls. Her back in. Oh, what a time. Clark on the money to a falter for two. That's eight assists in this first half for Caitlin Clark. Sadler gives it up, gets it back. Here's Sherrod. Form in, not that time. Rebound, flag down. Trapped in the corner, McLeod throws it away. Thierbach got it to Marshall, who then had it poked from behind by McLeod. Sherrod cross court. Weta shovels. Foreman needing help. 1.15 to go in this first half. Foreman. Finds Adler, nice movement here, but a travel. Hey, the Elite Eight round of the NCAA women. The winner of this game, Monday night in the Elite Eight, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Clark bounces, Stolke gets fouled. So you have Sadler, Sherrod, Weta, Foreman, and McLeod, the five on the floor for Colorado, as Sherrod will check out and Maddie Nolan in for Colorado. And now Iowa will check out Caitlin Clark with under a minute to go in this second quarter. Iowa really able to manage well, allowing Caitlin Clark to play even with those two fouls. And Stolke hits a pair. Stolke up to 10 points. And Iowa has matched its largest lead. It's 14. Sadler's jumper won't go. Good work inside. McLeod couldn't finish. And then a foul on Weta, who was battling with Stolke underneath. And Iowa's in the bonus. So Caitlin Clark was going to check in for the offensive possession, but then recognized that Iowa was in the bonus, so free throws here for Stolke, and she scampered right back to the bench. If I'm Iowa, though, I don't tempt fate, even these last 46 seconds. If it wasn't free throws, I still wouldn't have put her back in. <laughs> They've been able to survive with Martin on the bench for most of this second quarter as well with her two fouls. But both Martin, Clark, and Marshall talked to us yesterday about pouring into Stolke with positive affirmations, talking about she needs to be built up after she struggled in that second round against West Virginia with some fundamental things that she usually does so easily. And Stolke's responded here 11 points in this first half. Sadler, off to McLeod, 16 second difference game in shot clock. Sadler can't lay it in. Rebound knocked away from a falter. Nolan's three off the mark. Another offensive rebound. Sadler lays that one in. Great activity from Tamia Sadler to win the bucket for Colorado. 11 offensive rebounds now for Colorado. Shot clock turned off. Fierbach lost it. Weta has it, and that will do it for the first half. Caitlin Clark's advantage on Kate Martin inside. Martin playing with two fouls as well. 
Vonley back in, was limited to under eight minutes in that first half with her two personals, and Marshall begins the second half with a steal. Iowa was in a man-to-man. -man. Colorado trying to get it inside. Clark bounces low. Martin gets denied by Vonley. Immediately seeing Vonley's impact. Here's Von Ley trying to flag it down, able to save it to Foreman. Colorado, three for 14 from three in that first half. Nolan gives it up. Stolke comes up with a steal. Here is Clark. Clark, oh my goodness, what a pass for the bucket and the foul. Caitlin Clark drops it perfectly in the lap of a falter who has a chance for three. And a fault are going to take a minute to get up after that tumble. Ryan, not only the perfect placement on the pass, the velocity on it to get it through the defenders. Just if it's an inch to the left or right, that doesn't make it through. Her passing today has just been incredible as a falter gets a Nice hand getting up afterwards. You couple her passing with her scoring. She is the best offensive player in at least the last three decades since I've been watching her playing this game. A 51-35 Iowa lead. A falter having another big game. She has 12 points, is 5 of 5 from the floor. Here's Nolan's three. Missed it long. Sherrod, what an effort to get to that rebound for Colorado. Foreman hesitated. In and out. And Clark grabs the board. Martin did a good job on the box out. Here's Clark behind the back. Draws two. Finds Martin. Her three is good. Two players who had a shoot around are constantly teaching their teammates and not afraid to interject in a productive way. That's the kind of command Caitlin has. Know how to use their voice and are willing to do it. Boy, Miller in the corner knocks down the three. Nice play out of the timeout from J.R. Payne. Stolke, off to Martin. Here's Clark launching way short. And Miller the rebound. Clark just one of six from three. Winner of this game meets LSU Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Here's Nolan. Dumping it to Sherrod. Sherrod hops inside, can't finish, and Stokey the rebound. Really nice movement and ball sharing, though, on that possession for Colorado. Clark sending away Marshall. Waiting for the screen from Martin. And Stokey gets it back to Stokey. Stokey rummaging inside, couldn't finish around Vonley. Here's Sherrod. Dump it down, Vonley has the size and the skill to finish, plus the foul, no foul. But Vonley able to finish through the contact of Stolke. Stolke. Stolke took one in the gut early in the game, that time to the face, but yeah, it's just incidental contact, post play, physical post play. Here's Clark flashing open, driving it instead, working through Sherrod for the two. And we have seen in this game, Caitlin Clark consistently able to get to the rim on her drives. Clark now swipes it away. Here is Clark in transition, always dangerous. Clark working behind Stokey and lays it in. <laughs> 19 points for Caitlin Clark. She is seven of seven in the paint. Von Ley can't finish. Looked like Stolke maybe got away with a foul on Vonley, and that's what Maddie Nolan is contesting now. 
As Clark then draws the foul and grabs at her left arm. And I think you get the body foul first before the little push off at the end. You're talking with Iowa, they had such great respect for West Virginia, the defense they played, the amount of talented individual defenders they were able to throw at Caitlin Clark. Clark doesn't take the corner three, will drive it, shovel it, O'Grady, no, and it stays here. Colorado doesn't play a lot of zone, but here we see a 1-3-1 one, one, trapping quarter court, court zone, and they had a ton of success in this in their loss to Utah. They were able to come back huge in the fourth quarter by turning Utah over. Interesting to see here how Iowa handles it. O'Grady is trying to give it back to Clark. It'll stay here. I always love how swiftly you pick up all different zones. <laughs> It's not just a zone, it's a 1-3-1 traffic zone. <laughs> Clark finds Martin, can't hit. And Vonley on the floor to pick up the rebound. Here's Sherrod, Sherrod slices in and gets the whistle against Gabby Marshall. That'll be number one on Marshall. Here we go, two shots, here we go, play. Jalen Sherrod, just one of three players in school history with at least 1,000 career points and 600 career assists. This is the first, say for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Sherrod, it's the second free throw. Oh, Sherrod so quick getting in there and nearly coming up with a steal. And that's why they can be so deadly in a trapping zone because Sherrod is so lightning quick and can get there to trap. Out to Clark. Clark sidestepping three, won't be taken. Marshall has her pass knocked away. Here comes Foreman, great lead feed, and Sharon lays it in. Nice job by Foreman coming up with a steal and then making a great pass across her body to Sharon Clark, no, and Vonley the rebound. 0 for 3, Iowa now against this quarter court zone. Feels like you're maybe a Colorado bucket away from an Iowa timeout. Sherrod spinning, dishing, Von Ley lays it in. And the lead is 13 for Iowa. Lisa Bluter calling out a play against this zone. Marshall, mid-range, won't go. Miller the board, here comes Colorado. Sherrod prancing inside, and it's going to be a charge. A charge on Sherrod. will find a little bit of a rhythm here over the last few minutes of this third. And Iowa's had some trouble against that Colorado zone. Yeah, it's a 2-3 extended zone, and they've done an outstanding job trapping out of it here. Stolke surrounded. Martin looking to redirect, gets it to Clark. It's really sped Iowa up, though, in their quarter-court offense. Martin hits the mid-range, 11th assist for Clark. Martin, Clark, a falter, and Stolke all in double-figure scoring. Well, and it's a zone you talked about, Rebecca, being very successful in Colorado's comeback win against Utah earlier this year. It was a comeback loss, but they still came back and lost by one. I mean, this is a Colorado team, per synergy, only plays zone 7% of the time, but it is disruptive and it is effective and it helps them come back. 1-3-1 one, one now. Clark tried to fire it into traffic and that's the first turnover on the day for Caitlin Clark as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Lisa Bluter in that last timeout gave her team a bunch of suggestions against this zone that seems to have really disrupted the Iowa offense. She talked to them about 
ball fakes, getting into the gaps of that zone and driving the basketball more. And then she said there's a lot of space. When they are spread out like that, we've got to run our circle, reverse the ball, and get that zone moving. Weta probably had a little more time, thank you, Ali, than she realized there with the shot clock. Remember, this is a very heavy Iowa crowd. So the, they acted like the shot clock was already expiring. She had about four left on it. Martin, there's a tie-up. So and the possession arrow belongs to Iowa. What was interesting, before the media timeout is a 2-3 zone. They come out of the timeout, Iowa has talked about how to attack it. Now they're in the 1-3-1. But it's been disruptive, and even when Iowa's gotten shots off, I felt like they've been a little rushed, and it's helped increase the pace for Colorado and get out in transition and just play a speed that they want to play. Clark in the corner, connects on a three. Second three of the day for Clark. She has 22 points. And Vonley fouled on the floor by Stolke. Second foul on Iowa in this third. Just had one way to bust the zone. Give it to Caitlin Clark in the corner. Quay Miller's right there. Her hand is up, but Caitlin Clark has shown throughout her career. It doesn't matter how closely guarded she is. She can drain from deep. 20 plus points in 46 straight games. Into Miller. Miller unable to finish the first time, does the second. Here's Clark. As the dribble knocked away, here comes the trap, passes out of it. Martin drives it, leaning, doesn't get the roll. Miller the board and a whistle against Iowa. And it will go on Stolke. That is her third. Take a look at today's star stories brought to you by Honda. Caitlin Clark, 22 points, six rebounds, 11 assists. She's a very efficient 10 for 16 from the floor. Meanwhile, Kate Martin, who had to sit a long time in that first half with two fouls, still 12 points and five boards. We've seen enough stars today to fit into my Honda Odyssey minivan. <laughs> You really know how to make the sponsors happy. <laughs> Here's Miller, can't finish, rebound. Martin, Clark, eyes up. Here's Clark, wheeling back, will fire, and hit! Clark up to 25 points. That three, no good. Clark just tied Diana Taurasi for the most threes in a career in NCAA tournament games. The logo, no. Martin soars in, keeps it alive, and then taken away by Sadler. Sadler having it nipped at, and it's knocked out of bounds. Last touch to Iowa. It's coming down, feeling a little physicality, and again, Miller right in her face, and Caitlin drains it. How about this, Rebecca? Since 2000, there have been 10 NCAA tournament games. To make it 11 of 25 points and 10 assists, and Caitlin Clark has accounted for five of them. Oh, what a dime, and a falter lays it in. How about a falter, 15 points on six of six shooting. Colorado does not have a player in double figures, and Iowa has four, and one of the reasons is because Caitlin Clark is just spoon feeding her teammates. 12 assists for Clark, who does not check out, but just gets a little swig of water. And one key for Clark, just one turnover in this game. Now she could get a triple-double here as well. She's got six boards on the day. You mentioned it before. Caitlin, talking with us at length yesterday, said 
she has felt the weight of the world on her shoulders to perform. But she said, these are the most fun games to play in. And that's really what's been her respite away from dealing with the expectations that have come with the phenomenon that is Caitlin Clark. What's interesting is that she's felt the weight and still been able to perform. Yes. Here's Clark. Got caught in the air and threw it away. And then McCabe comes right back with a steal. You see A.J. Ettinger getting some minutes for the first time today. Clark open in the corner. Fierbach didn't see her at first. Now Clark finds Ettinger. Five to shoot. And a three-second violation against Iowa. Lisa Bruder told us we might see Ettinger today, and she's a player. She did not play in the second round. She did not play in the Big Ten championship game, but Lisa Bluter says she has a toughness about her, F felt like she could use her here in this one. Clark checks out for the final 21 seconds of this third. Unless they get the ball back, and she'll come back in. Right. Colorado can hold for a final shot here. Five seconds left, and it's out of bounds. Stays here with Colorado. 3.5 seconds remaining in this third. Sherrod gets it into Nolan, her three, short, and that'll do it for the third quarter. Iowa's lead is 21, Holly chats with Lisa. They would always talk about his elite processing speed, and as you're seeing this passing, it's that she's anticipating, but then processing what's about to happen with such speed, the defense can't react. Just a, a skill you can't teach in Caitlin Clark with this passing. Yeah. And it's one of the things, Holly, that excites me about her at the next level. In terms of the teammates, she is going to be surrounded by. How about her getting it into the post to Aaliyah Boston? I mean, that combination is going to be incredible. Clark whips it inside right on cue. Gets it back. A logo three. Short. Stolke the rebound. Nice patience. And for those who don't know, Indiana, the Indiana Fever, have the first pick of the WNBA draft. As Marshall knocks in a three, and I think it's a safe bet to say we know who they're taking with number one. I think so. Here's Sherrod. Sherrod turns the corner, had a layup, gave it up instead, and... Colorado ends up fruitless on the interior. Yeah, Sherrod did a really good job attacking the zone, but she did have an open look up on the bucket. Marshall thought about launching and then throws it away. Winner of this game advances to the Elite Eight for a meeting with LSU Monday night as Foreman hits her third three of the day. Frida Foreman, who became Colorado's all-time leader in three-pointers made earlier in this game. A falter. Here's Marshall. Giving it back to Clark. Into the corner. Martin in and out. But that's the area that's going to be open against this zone is in one of the deep corners. And Lisa Bluter's going to take a timeout after the offensive rebound. 13 assists today to go with 25 points, six rebounds. Here's Martin bouncing to Stolke. Stolke unable to finish, gets it back. Marshall's three, you bet. Gabby Marshall is so important to Iowa's success, in particular in the NCAA tournament and championship games in the Big Ten Conference. It's got to be huge for her confidence to see the ball go in like it has today. Always asked to guard the best perimeter player, does that relentlessly, regardless whether or not shots are going in, but it's such a huge boon to their offense when she is hitting threes. Here's Stolke in the corner. Try to get it into Clark and kicked out of bounds. 
Edinger will get some minutes here. In for Stolke. Here's Martin in a crowd, gets fouled, and Kate Martin will shoot two. Weta picks up the personal. Martin kind of shaking out that right arm a little bit afterwards. Martin, Marshall, and Clark know whenever they lose or win a title, that will be it for those three and their collegiate careers as we send things over to Holly. Well, Gabby Marshall has already got some really exciting news. Her goal for her life is to become an occupational therapist. And she has just gotten in as a graduate student to the North Carolina Master's Program for Occupational Therapy. She said she went to an appointment with her little brother Luke when he was a kid and he had some sensory issues. She was so blown away by the care and love that the doctors gave and the help that he received. She vowed that she would grow up and become one one day. So Gabby's basketball career will end with this tournament, but her goals are still alive with her future in that Master's Program. Love that, Holly. You saw her father and brother here at the game. In the corner, Marshall on cue. The lead has swelled to 27. As Iowa has just been on a completely different plane offensively than what we saw in the second round against West Virginia. Marshall has nine of the last 11 Iowa points. Clark, great feed. Ediger lays it in. Took him a couple of possessions, but Iowa has certainly figured out how to attack the zone. Papa Clark applauding the assist. Now 14 for Caitlin Clark. He goes by Papa Clark now? Well, usually he goes by Brent, but you know, every once in a while. That's his children's book name. Clark can't lay it in, takes a hard tumble, and it's out of bounds to Iowa. Gabby Marshall on the day, four of five from three, stepping into it confidently. She didn't score in the second round game. Big smile here. Caitlin Clark now knows how important Marshall and her confidence from deep are. And Colorado back in the man now. The steal, Foreman gets fouled by Fierbach. Caitlin Clark has two brothers, right? Yeah. So we got like Papa Clark and the Three Bears. <laughs> three Hawks, I suppose. You know, it's interesting to me, you always have children's novels on your mind. I know, and my kids aren't even that age anymore. We got a chance to see it. Well, we'd have to add Mama Clark, too. You, you are a part of the P.D. Eastman fan club. Uh, yeah, you 100%. See the family here. It was actually interesting at the hotel last night. There were fans waiting to take pictures with Caitlin's parents. They, too, now have the celebrity status. As they should. Yes. 81-57, Iowa in front. Here's Clark. Giving it up to a falter. Clark, and the falter loses it. Colorado has it. Sherrod racing ahead, gets fouled by Clark on the floor. Third foul on Clark. Hey, coming up, Jada Walker, Baylor, 545 tip. Eastern time on ESPN, Baylor and USC. What a second round game against Virginia Tech. Jada Walker had. She went and took that game. She won that game for Baylor against Virginia Tech. And you and I had a chance to see her have some, an incredible performance when she was still at Kentucky yes. against South Carolina. And a foul here is going to be on Vonley after the steal from Fearbach. Caitlin got like four juggles in that time with her feet. <laughs> she was an excellent soccer player before she gave it all up for basketball. Here's Clark around the screen, driving it. Clark finishes 27 points, 14 assists. 
Six rebounds for Clark. The 14 assists, the most she has ever had in an NCAA tournament game. Miller's three, back iron no, Marshall flags down the rebound. Here's Clark speeding ahead. Clark behind the back, shifty, and then is gonna back it up with a smile on her face. Eight on the shot clock. A falter. Tosses back, Ediger can't finish. And it's out of bounds to Colorado. And uh, that may do it this afternoon for Caitlin Clark. Clark set the tone right away with her exquisite passing, getting Iowa out and running, easy looks for her teammates. And the Hawkeyes never really had to sweat in this one against Colorado. And probably equally as important as you look ahead to them advancing, it was not a physically grueling game for Iowa, whereas LSU's was. Nolan drops in the three. According to Vivid Seats, the average get-in price, just under $200 a ticket to this game. Fans so excited to come here and see Caitlin in person, see this Iowa team against Colorado. And Clark delivering as she so often does. And what is on deck? Well, a rematch of the 2023 National Championship game. Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, LSU, Iowa. Barring a remarkable Colorado comeback here, you're gonna have that matchup 7 Eastern on ESPN on Monday night. Oh, and Clark's gonna check back in. And Gabby Marshall will check out. Do you think Caitlin was just in Lisa Bluter's ear? saying, like, let me back in the game. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. It, if I'm Iowa, I might be a little more conservative than that, given the score, the time, and what's ahead. Here's Miller. Can't hit. Marshall, you heard, get a nice hand there. Nolan buries the three. Lead is 20. For Iowa, perhaps Lisa Bluter thinking she just wants to see a couple more buckets before she feels totally comfortable over there. Clark tried to get it to Martin, knocked out of bounds by Miller. There's a chance she also wanted to give Gabby Marshall the exit so she could get the ovation that she got from the crowd. But you could probably do that without Someone having to else. send Clark back in. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Here's Clark. Clark lays it in, 29 for Caitlin Clark. She's 13 of 22 from the floor. Clark the flyby, Sherrod a three, round it off. Martin the rebound, up ahead, and Sherrod never stopping. Jalen Sherrod, such a competitor, and her motor took her right into the scorer's table. So impressed with how hard that young woman has continued to play here in the fourth quarter on the defensive end of the floor. Just continues to fight. And you can hear even the Iowa fans there applauding the effort from Sherrod. Clark. Bounces to Martin, cutting through. Can't bank it in. Tipped out of bounds by Miller. It stays here. And now will they come and get Clark? No, but Martin gets her applause. The layup is good. 
Kimfi lays it in on another assist from Clark, her 15th today. Here's Clark. Tossing to Fearbach. Air mails it. McCabe's three won't go. If I was Iowa, I would consider taking a foul to get Caitlin out of the game. Yes. Nolan in the corner. Drops in another three. Maddie Nolan's third three of the day. And now Lisa Bluter is indeed going to have Iowa take a timeout. And now that will end the day for Caitlin Clark. Jalen Sherrod giving a big long hug to her head coach, J.R. Payne, and the rest of the coaching staff now. As this will do it for her fantastic collegiate career. After so many successful seasons at Colorado. Quay Miller will be finished as well. As Marshall hits the jumper, Maddie Nolan, Tamia Sadler, Charlotte Whitaker, all have had so much success in their collegiate careers and so much to be proud of. Colorado back in the Sweet 16 consecutive seasons for the first time since 2002, 2003. And all of them finish their college careers this afternoon in Albany. Gerber can hit, tilts out of bounds with 35.3 to go in this fourth quarter. The fans starting to file down to try and get autographs post game. All shifting down behind and near Iowa's bench. Not a five second difference, game and shot clock as Jim Fee travels. Clark masterful today, 29 points, 15 assists, six rebounds, 13 of 22 from the floor. Get your popcorn ready. Iowa LSU, the rematch is happening.